Welcome back to the second episode of the Shader Dev series, 3D graphics for games. Uh, last time I realized that I wanted to keep a short video and it ended up being way longer than I thought it would be, so this time I'm going to go even shorter. Uh, first episode talked about um, some of the things that we use all the time when working on 3D games. We knocked out vertices, vectors, and uh, believe it or not, those two concepts were enough to take like a half hour video to explain. Today, we're gonna cover three concepts, but we're gonna take a lot less time because none of the three of these things are as complex as uh, introduction to, to vectors. Uh, I was going to talk about coordinate systems at the end of this video, but something told me that it was going to be long enough already, and uh, I want to keep these things shorter so that they're not too overwhelming to deal with in one sitting. So uh, I'm going to start with polygons here, and polygons basically uh, break down into triangles on graphics hardware. They're the building blocks of 3D geometry, and they're made up out of vertices. Um, on the GPU, like I just said, everything boils down to triangles. Uh, so when you see a 3D game or uh, 3D graphics of any kind rendered or shaded, um, what you are seeing, even if the 3D modeler was working with po polygons, which are many sided objects, as many as you want, um, when it's rendered on the graphics hardware and by the time it reaches a shader, uh, the shader's really only going to see things in the forms of uh, the most basic primitives, which are the polygons. There are lines and points as well, but the mass majority is dealing with uh, triangular polygons. So I'm just going to show you an example of this. Uh, 3D modeling software, mine included, Virta Studio, allows the user to create things out of quads, which are uh, four-sided polygons. But even quads are split right down the middle to create two triangles for each quad when they're rendered on the, uh, the graphics hardware. Um, that's the most I can say about polygons, at least on this slide. I will say, um, bringing things back to vectors um, already that we talked about last time, every triangular face has a single normal vector, which is basically a unit vector that is perpendicular to the triangle. Um, the example here, N, is sh it's almost as if it was standing on the triangle uh, and is shooting right off the triangle. And uh, normal vectors are very important. We're going to use them a lot uh, when developing shaders. Um, they're useful for a lot of things, the most important being uh, to compute lighting. So um, that's the, uh, the normal vector. And uh, that's normal vectors and triangles are very closely uh, related, especially when you're doing lighting. That example right there in the lower left just shows you how you would compute a normal vector from uh, the vertices or points of a triangular face. Um, I covered this a lot, or at least something similar to this, in the last video, but basically it's um, the vector uh, to B, so B minus A, that's the vector from A to B, cross product, the vector from C to B. So basically all you really need to create a normal vector from a triangular face is two uh, two vectors, any two vectors that run along the edges of the triangle, and then you take those two vectors and you cross product the two vectors, and then you normalize the result, and that's your normalized normal vector. Um, enough about that. Uh, planes. Planes are basically uh, a geometric mathematical concept that triangles uh, are really any flat surface in 3D space, but particularly triangles, um, are, are closely related to. It is a possibly infinite and most often thought of as infinite flat 2D surface. So if you were to think of this um, triangular shape that I have here, if you were to just keep scaling the edges or the points and just keep scaling it out and out and out forever, um, you would basically show or, or expose the infinite plane that that triangle spans. So every triangle spans or, or a, a theoretical infinite plane. Um, and that's basically one way to think of, uh, of a plane. It's, um, it's, uh, it's basically a 2D surface that kind of goes out forever. Uh, finite planes I, I think of as just quads. Um, 
so there are some standard planes in 3D. I just want to talk about a couple of them. I, I put the word standard in quotes because it's kind of like my loose definition of what a standard plane would be if there was one. So um, the XZ plane, if you think of uh, the 3D space and you think of the X and Z axes, um, those X and Z axes span a plane that just kind of goes out forever, and that, um, that plane is the XZ plane. And the normal or perpendicular vector of that plane is the y-axis. So uh, when you're working on 3D modeling software that has a coordinate system where uh, y is up and x and z are kind of the sideways uh, vectors uh, that you're, if you think of x, z plane as kind of the floor, uh, a lot of 3D editors will kind of start off showing you something like that. Um, there's some more. Uh, the y, z plane this is kind of common sense at this point, is spanned by the y and z axes. The normal to that is the x-axis, and the x-y plane is spanned by the x and y axes, and the normal to that is this z. Uh, the x-y plane is interesting because, um, believe it or not, um, all 2D graphics on a computer screen is done in the x-z, or sorry, x-y plane. All computer graphics on a computer is done in the XY plane. Whenever you think of X and Y moving a point around, that's all stuck or done in 2D space on the XY plane. And if you thought of a normal vector or the third axis shooting out off to your computer screen directly toward you, um, that would be the, uh, the Z axis, the normal vector. Um, actually, it would be shooting into the screen the way OpenGL works, but it that's not true. Shooting towards you is the positive z-axis. Um, it's really neat because we, when you start thinking this way, you can think of that all 2D graphics and all 2D work is always done in a plane. And that plane is just whatever you define it to be, and most commonly it's called the XY plane. So you can work in 2D within 3D by using the concept of a plane. I'm going to cover this a lot more when I talk about uh, coordinate systems and transforms in the future videos. Now we're going to talk about angles. Now, angles seem pretty stupid and pretty trivial, but uh, and I thought I was actually going to spend like one slide on them until I started making the slides, and then I realized like there's actually quite a bit um, to angles because angles and vectors are very closely related. Um, angles, in my opinion, can uh, the simplest way to think of them is that they can represent a 2D rotation, uh, a rotation in a plane, which is of course two dimensional. Um, a more official or more um, formal definition of an angle is that you can form it from two vectors. In other words, an angle is formed from the angle between two vectors, and that's what gives you the angle. It's either in uh, 0 to 360 degrees or 0 to 2 pi radians. I'm not a big fan of radians. I tend to work in degrees just because um, that's what I prefer, but it doesn't matter. There's just two ways to think of it. Um, all the standard math functions, and um, I think both GLSL and definitely C, prefer to work with radians, though, for their input. Just a fair warning in that. Um, one of the reasons why programming with angles when you're starting out and kind of naive can be so friggin' annoying is that they wrap around. So once an angle goes up to 360, 361 is the same as 1. And um, that can get you into trouble when you're doing simple if statements like if one angle is less than another, what does that really mean if it wraps around? And of course, you know, angles can go up as much as you want to 720, 1080, 360. And, um, you know, when you have multiple angles, high numbers that correspond to the same range, you can get a little tricky as well. Um, anyway, got off on a tangent there, no pun intended. Um, so if you have two vectors, V0, V0 and V1, um, theta is defined as the angle between those two vectors. And this is important because even though um, angles are sort of a 2D concept in the sense that they fit in a plane, um, this is the same in 3D and 2D uh, in the sense that if you want to get the angle between two vectors, all you do is you take the inverse cosine of the dot product of the two vectors and you have the angle between them. It'll give it to you in radians and you can convert to degrees, but that's your angle. And if you do that in a 3D, I think, don't quote me wrong, 4D, 5D, as many dimensions as you want, but definitely 2D and 3D, um, you can get the angle between two vectors this way, which is pretty cool. Um, this kind of begs you to wonder, though, what happens when the uh, vector starts, you know, the angle starts getting larger and larger and larger. In this example, um, 
the angle is greater than 90 degree angle, but it's not quite 180 yet. Well, what happens when you go past 180? Well, this kind of has to do with the way dot products work, and it definitely has to do with the way um, angles work between vectors. If you go past 180, well then, uh, when you take that inverse cosine of the angle between the two vectors, you're going to get the smaller angle always. So you're actually going to get that one on the bottom side instead of the greater than 180 one on the top. If you wanted phi up there, which is the, the greater angle, the oblique angle, all you do is just take, uh, that's a freaking typo, it should be 2 pi minus, but I, I'm always thinking in degrees, so you know, basically 360 or 2 pi minus the inverse cosine of the dot product, and that'll give that to you. If you wanted to use um, degrees there, you would do 360 minus the degree conversion of that, which is a function I always define in C called degrees. Isn't this exciting? I know you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. Um, more shit about angles from vectors. So we're still talking about, yeah, we're talking about angles from vectors still. So what happens if you only have one vector now? That gray one is just the polar straight up. It basically is the vector defined by no angle, which is just zero. You think of it almost like a clock hand. And if you wanted to deal with a vector or a point that could go anywhere around the circle all the way up to 360, almost like a winding watch hand, and you always wanted to get that clockwise angle on the right side, no matter what. You don't want to get the shortest one. Uh, there's a little shortcut. I wish someone had told me this when I was learning programming when I was younger because it was a pain to actually find this out. There's a function called ATAN2, and ATAN2, given the y and x component of a vector, will always give you the, um, the greater the right angle that you're looking for on the right side uh, for a clockwise uh, rotation of a vector. And this, um, trust me, at some point if you do enough game programming you will need and want to know about ATAN2. Um, it's not mathematically defined, it's defined in C, in GLSL as a function you can call, but the math definition is actually quite ugly. Um, but you don't have to worry about that because ATAN2 is built into the standard C library and you can just call it as a function, same thing with GLSL. Uh, so that's a tan too. Uh, very useful to know about. So going backwards, we told you how to get uh, angles from vectors. How would you get a vector back from an angle? So let's pretend that you only had theta here and you didn't know what v was, and you wanted to um, get it. So this is a 2D example, such on the xz plane. I call this the Doom example because if you're playing Doom, you're walking on the xz plane. Y is vertical. Like if you were to jump, you jump vertically in Y. And you want to know the vector that you need to make him move for his velocity when you press up on the keyboard. So, for example, if you're aiming a certain direction and you hit up, you want to move that way. So you want to generate v so that in your game loop you can basically do position plus equals v to move in that direction. Well, this little example here will, given a unit vector, give you the, uh, or sorry, given, um, given an angle will give you the unit vector that you need. Uh, to convert that angle to that direction. And that's basically x is the sine of the theta and y, or sorry, and z is the cosine of that theta. This is how you get a 2D in a plane um, vector from an angle. And it'll always give you um, that answer. Depending on your coordinate system, sometimes you'll flip the cosine, so you'll do negative cosine theta, depending on uh, what coordinate system you're in and maybe even negative sine theta, but the basic premise is exactly the same. Sine of theta and cosine of theta. So if you ever think you'll go through your whole game programming career without needing sin and cos, you'll be wrong if you ever need to work with angles. Uh, I could talk a hell of a lot more about angles, but I actually um, want to stop here because, I, like I said, I wanted to keep these videos, you know, primer size, bite size, and, uh, and, and you know, not cover too much in one video. So next time we'll talk about uh, coordinate systems and bring all this stuff together. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.